Hello, Master 006 Rebecca to continue on with Mega Man 9. I've been buzzing along nicely so far, so how's about I truly test my progress by taking on Hornet Man. Spoiler alert, I can't exactly come out of this stage claiming to be the bee's knees. But anyway, a very flowery field for level, and I guess that's entirely appropriate. So we start out with a few minecart enemies that drive back and forth and chuck rubble at you when you attack them. So always try to do so from a safe distance away, and eventually the rubble will disappear before you have to worry about dodging it. We also have some flower pot enemies that don't move around at all, but again, if you get close enough to them, we'll fire a flower at you. Yes, I know, not exactly too intimidating. But regardless, if you're able to, take them out from a distance, and you won't even have flowers to worry about. There I shot at the platform to make it unfurl, so that I could reach the ladder. Don't hang around with doing this incidentally though, it'll coil up again quite quickly. And the scissor or shear enemies can be very annoying if you don't take one half out. They'll combine together and start zooming in from both sides of the screen to attack you. We'll encounter them again later, and you'll really see what I mean. Uh, then there's three or four screens where we have to first attack the pitcher to get far projectiles at us, and then lure the projectiles to destroy the floor underneath us so that we can progress. It's only really this last screen that you need to be super careful on, just make sure you don't uncover too many of the spikes. And that brings us to the flower mid-boss, easily the most unpredictable and annoying mid-boss in the game. Okay, so it can pop up from any of the eight platforms, although I've never seen it pop up from a platform Mega Man standing on, and if you leave it long enough without attacking it, it will fire four flower petals at you. Throw in a constantly chasing spike clock hand, thankfully not insta-kill, and most definitely insta-kill spikes on the floor have to contend with, beating this mid-boss without taking damage can be a huge pain. My best advice is to always stay a good deal ahead of the clock hand, dropping from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock is a good way of doing this, and all things equal, try to position yourself at 9 o'clock most of the time to pop up and attack it as soon as you can to stop it from attacking you. Thankfully, after getting hit three times in the first 10 seconds, the remainder of this fight went okay, but yeah, this is potentially a very irritating mid-boss. And unfortunately, my poor performance shows no sign of improving. I told you we'd have more awkward unfurling platforms, completely spikes underfoot, and oh goody, Shears and I for some reason can't seem to dodge. I backtracked there instantly because I didn't fancy I'd be able to make it to the next safe point before the platform curled up and left me with an entirely doomed destiny. Ultimately, try to keep as high up as you can, that may mean you can save yourself if things go wrong, and try to take out at least one half of the Shears, or you'll have to contend with them a second time. Play to the right here and only attack the minecart when it's sufficiently far from the left, or dodging the rubble will be a problem. As for the flower pot, try to lure a flower over the right and then quickly climb the ladder to take it out before the next flower it fires gets within range. So those flower pots might as well not even be there, but somewhat ashamedly, I don't think I've had to do this on many other robots levels throughout these LPs, I actually need that health pickup and it still doesn't even get me to full life. Yeah, this has not been a good showing on my part. Shoot that flower pot through the wall because, well, why not? A slightly more threatening flower pot this time round as we'll have to get close enough for it to actually attack us, and we round off the level with Mega Man 9's arm the big eye, the big stomper. It's a bit more daunting than other levels, but here, thanks to the low ceiling, it can't really get within Royce of range, because its jump distance is severely restricted. Wow, that level didn't go so well. I wonder how the boss is going to go. Not great either. Hornet Man has only one strategy. Light to the ceiling, aim three holy hornets at you, and traverse from one side of the screen to the other. He's simple enough if you can take out all three hornets quickly, but if not, dodging him and any leftover holy hornets becomes tricky. And for whatever reason during this fight, I just couldn't see how to hit the mini hornets with any consistency. Unfortunately, this meant that the problem seemed to snowball, as I often found myself out of to quickly destroy the mini hornets the next time he attacked, and the cycle just continued. He's a very hit and miss boss for me, literally. If I can take out the mini hornets, I tend to have a good time. If I can't, I usually have a bad time. And this was no exception. For my extensive troubles, I get Hornet Chaser. It not only hones in to attack enemies, but it can also be used to collect otherwise unreachable health, weapon energy, and extra lives. So it's very handy. Well, that stage went terribly, so I wouldn't be at all surprised if any of you thought it would be a pain to perfect run. You are right. But just how much did this sting?
Nah, it could have been worse. Now, in retrospect, I'm not at all sure why I chose to tackle this stage third, but I can only assume that I severely misjudged just how annoying one particular part of the level was going to be. Regardless, no problems on the first screen. Provided, as I said before, you attack all those enemies from a safe distance away, you'll have nothing to worry about. Now, judging from my slowly edging forward there, you'd be right in assuming that something happened that encouraged me to take a little more care over that section. One very clumsy outtake while trying to deal with the first of the two sets of shears. And while nothing concerning on the first three picture screens, the fourth tripped me up a couple of times. It really shouldn't, as if I do the same thing every time, then I'll achieve the same outcome every time, but little differences will result in more awkward dodging and or platforming, as indeed I ended up with this time around. But thankfully, I still managed to pull off the I Wanna Be style cliff jump. Ah, the flower mid-boss. Massively misjudged its potential annoyance. If this thing decides it wants to be a pain in the ass, then a pain in the ass it will be. There are definitely certain platforms I never want to see this flower materialise on, namely the leftmost one and the one just above it, and should it choose these ones, I am liable to be in big trouble. A total of eight outtakes here, and while it doesn't even come close to the junk eye or the weird fish thing in Grenade or Aqua Stage to make a man 80 turns of annoyance, don't underestimate this thing. And three mess ups on this screen, principally the result of trying to go way too fast for my own good. Stick to the top route when you're given an option, and just keep your wits about you. Don't try to unnecessarily rush. And no problems with anything else left in the level. If you take everything out from a distance, you'll avoid pretty much everything. The only exception I could possibly think of would be the last flower pot enemy, but attack it quickly once you drop down, move to the right to dodge the flower, and you should be absolutely fine. Hornet Man, for me anyway, all boils down to whether or not I can take out all three mini Hornets quickly. Manage this, and he leaves himself open to just peppering with shots. Fail to, and I spend all my time dancing around the room trying to avoid homing enemies. As you'll see here, there was only once during this fight that I ended up having to do a bit of dancing, and the rest of the time I was fine. I did fail on the two previous attempts I reached the boss though, so I guess third time really was the charm. EB. So this one proved to be a little trickier than I was expecting. But I think it ended up that way because I completely misjudged how annoying the mid-boss was going to be. I've complained about the mid-boss in Mega Man 8 being annoying, I certainly don't need the ones in Mega Man 9 following suit. Hornet stage took me 45 minutes to get the perfect run, so still not too long, but a definite step up in difficulty from the first two stages. And I suffered 16 outtakes, with two of those being on the Roadmaster, and incidentally, half on the flat mid boss. Most of this level is usually fine, but there are a few screens that can be troublesome. You need to be careful with the last picture screen, as you don't have a lot of room to manoeuvre around in. Luring the balls to open up a path is actually quite dangerous, but it's unavoidable here. So as well as leaving yourself enough room to dodge the balls, you also need to ensure that you don't leave yourself with too big a gap over the spikes to jump over and that can take some getting used to. The screen with the retracting platforms and the shears is also very intimidating to begin with, and knowing which sets of shears you want to kill, and which you want to leave be, is very important. But then there's the flower mid-boss, which is just an enormous pain. You obviously need to pay close attention to the circling barrier and stay a good distance ahead of it, but the bloody flower can pop up pretty much wherever it wants, and royally screw you over. I'd suggest trying to be on the middle platform on the left, as that means you can attack the flower if it's high up and easily avoid the pebbles that things away if it's low down, 
and move in the same clockwise direction the barrier is travelling in. But if in the course of circling the screen you find yourself at the bottom and the flower pops up on the left middle or high left platforms, you'll have a hell of a time avoiding the petals and keeping ahead of the barrier. As far as I can tell, there's absolutely no telling where the flower will pop up, so this becomes much more of a luck-based fight than I would like, and is by far and away the greatest noise of the level. As for Hornet, I think there's a tendency to think that he looks simple. After all, his pattern certainly appears so. But for me anyway, I never feel completely confident about being able to take out all three little Hornets before I have to jump over Hornet Man. And if you leave those little Hornets on screen for too long, they start homing in on you, and it all of a sudden becomes really tricky to avoid the Hornets and Hornet Man. But ultimately, this is all the fight boils down to, so I still don't think he's that bad. Yes, the time taken wasn't too long, but that seemed like quite a lot of outtakes at the time, and repeatedly messing up, or more accurately, repeatedly getting screwed over by the plot mid-boss, did temper my mood slightly. So I end up rating Hornet as a 4 out of 10. Neither the level nor the Robot Master should be taken lightly, that's for certain. On the level, the last picture screen requires some careful attention, as does the screen with the retracting platforms and shears, but it's the mid-boss that ultimately wins out at being the most troublesome section. Its random location spawning can sometimes just stuff you up completely. And Hornet, while he appears to have an easy pattern, if you don't manage to take out his little Hornets fast, things are likely to go very wrong very quickly. This can either be an especially easy looking fight, or an especially clumsy looking one. But that's the sting well and truly taken out of another Robot Master. Do I have a concrete strategy for dealing with the next one? You'll have to tune in again to find out. Cheerio.